One of the most frequent requests we receive from our subscribers is to talk about advanced features of Microsoft Word. This is why we put together this advanced features tutorial, where we will focus on some cool features like hidden table and how you can use it to create simple picture resume. How would you replace background for the image in Microsoft Word? How can you write in the picture? And how can you delete extra blank pages? Let's go ahead and look at all of these features in more details. Sometimes to achieve professional look in Microsoft Word document, you might require high level of precision of where text and image are located. For example, as I am editing my son's essay and inserted the picture, I would like to make sure that the text flows around the picture or maybe on the right side or on the left side of the picture. One of the ways to accomplish this is to use hidden table. To add table into the document, you need to have an empty row in the table and then use insert and then use table. And we typically just need three by one table. And once you select it, you click insert. Next step would be to drag the image right into the table, or you can cut and paste image into the table. You can then play with the image sizes and resize the image as necessary. And also you can play with the sizes of the table cells. If there is some specific text that's relevant to the picture, you might consider cutting this text and then pasting it into the table. There might be two paragraphs that might be relevant to the picture. So you can do this by cutting two paragraphs and pasting them into the third cell. And then the last step would be to select the table and make sure that the borders in that table are not visible. To do that, we need to go to Table Design and Table Layout tabs. If you click on Table Design, you access the different border styles for the table. And one of the styles would be No Borders. Once you select No Border Style, the borders of the table disappear, and the text smoothly flows around the picture. Hidden Table will not show up in the main editing mode, and it will also not show up in the Reading View mode as well, as well as it will also be hidden when you try to print this document. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and Master's degree in Computer Science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You typically start creating picture resume by identifying and cutting the right picture. For example, if I open this picture in the Paint Editor, which is available in every version of Microsoft Windows, select the area I would like to keep for the picture and use Copy and then paste this picture in Microsoft Word, I will be able then to apply picture style by selecting the picture, going into picture format, and selecting oval style. It is typically a good idea to select picture of high quality and then reduce it in size so you will preserve the quality of the picture. Once your picture is of a desired size, you can change the layout to make this picture floating. And once you have picture in place, you can start working on the resume. The first step to do the resume might be to change the layout to make margins narrow and then insert the table, which you will later make hidden. To insert the table, you navigate to Insert tab and select the table. I will add the table with five columns. We will use the first column as the separator. Second column will contain icons for the address and other contact information. Third column will have the address itself. Fourth column will be a separator column. And the fifth column will have the content of the resume. To place the picture, we will select first 3x3 three three block and merge the cells. After this is completed, we can place our picture into this merged cell. We will put the name of the candidate into the upper right corner and we will increase the size of the fonts. We will add candidate's contact information on the left side and contact information will include cell phone as well as the email. To enhance the visual appeal of the information, we will add an icon. To add an icon, we need to click on insert and select icons. When you type email, 
you can select among various available icons for the email. And once inserted, you can reduce the size of the icon and put it into the right cell. We will do the same thing for the cell phone. Once icons are in place, it might be a good idea to center them. And you do this by selecting the icons column and centering the content of the column. We might also consider reducing the size of the first column. And you do it by selecting the column and moving the icons to the left. To make content of the contact information fit better, we might need to change the size of the information. To do it, we select the text and we reduce the font size. To make it look professional, we might also consider changing the layout and making the text placed in the center of the cell. To do that, we navigate to the table's layout. To do it, we select the text and align it using Align Center Left button. In the next section, we might consider adding objective information. To do it, we type the objective, which would be the title for the section, and then we add the content. We might consider highlighting objective and making it bold to make it more vivid and visible. As we continue editing, we might add an experience information. To do that, we put the word experience and resize it to make it larger, as well as highlighting it in bold. The actual experience would be in a separate cell, and we can highlight the dates, the job title, and the company name in bold as well. It is typically a good idea to start describing your experience with the action verb, as well as put experience as bullets. As we continue to add more experience, we might apply the same formatting. To do it, we select the dates, title, as well as location and the company name, and highlight it in bold. You can also use Format Painter, and you can select the text you're trying to copy the format from and apply it to the similar section. As we ran out of rows in our table, we can add additional rows by putting the cursor in the last cell and using the Tab button to navigate and add more rows. Having more rows allows us to add our additional experience onto the resume and format it so it looks similar to other experiences. You might decide to conclude your resume by adding the education section. And because this is the section name, you might consider applying the same formatting as you had for experience section to the education section. Typically, you put the education information in resume in the format of the months and then the year of graduation, include name of the university and the type of degree that you received. As a last step, you would need to hide the borders on your resume. To do it, you select the table and select No Border. As you look at the resume, you might consider making some final adjustments. For example, you might consider underlining the section name, as well as to making sure that the centered format applied to the icons as well. And if you're happy with your resume, you can save it as PDF and send it to potential employers. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, tricks, and techniques we share with you here on Online Training for Everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. A lot of times, you may need to replace the background for the image in Microsoft Word. For example, I may have an image of the person sitting in the office, but I would like to put this lady into this office and have her background be represented by the second image. We can accomplish this in three steps. First, we need to remove the background on the image one. Second, we need to identify the new background, which is image two, which we already did. And as a third step, we need to align image one and put it on top of the image two. So on the left is how the picture looks with original background. On the right, the background was removed. What I would like to do now, I would like to add a new background for the picture that doesn't have background. I don't need this picture on the left, so I am going to delete it. I was just showing it for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to bring in a picture of the new background. I need to resize it to make it similar size with the picture we already have. Microsoft Word supports multi-layered architecture. The bottom layer is white paper. And now we have two pictures side by side, background picture 
and picture of the beautiful lady with background removed. To replace the background in the picture, we need to get to this architecture. On top, we need to have image with the background removed. This would be the image of the lady. Next layer, we would need to have the image of the new background. And the last layer would be Microsoft Word document paper. To accomplish this, we need to change the layout options for the pictures. So let's first change layout options for the background image. We're going to select behind text option for the background image. And as soon as we did, make the image of the lady flow on top of the new background image. By playing with sizes, we can adjust it so it looks natural and realistic. If images are of the different proportions, like in our case, we can use cropping technique to make sure everything fits and creates an illusion of the new background image. Also, because Word is the combination of text and images, it's always good to have an option show and hide special characters on. Having this option on allows us to see that there are two spaces here, which we can remove. And as soon as we did, it allows us much smoother flow of the image, one on top of the other. Even after some of the editing, you see that the bottom is not aligned. We still see the background of the old picture, and it doesn't look professional. Because it's hard to edit both pictures when one of them is on top of the other. We can separate the pictures temporarily and make some adjustments to the background picture. To do that, I am going to add additional lines and move picture on top toward the bottom. I am going to select the background picture now and I am going to crop the picture. I do this by selecting Format Picture option and using the Crop option. I am going to change the size of the picture a little bit and hit Enter. Now I can remove some of the end of the line characters and bring the original picture of the lady back on top. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. Sometimes you may need to write on the picture inside Microsoft Word document. So how do you do it? For example, this is an essay my son wrote about my childhood after interviewing me and let's say we would like to add a picture into this essay. I'm gonna drag the picture from File Explorer and drop it right here in the Word document. And let's assume that my intention is to add a title, flooded area, on top of this picture. One of the easiest way to do it is by using insert and then add a floating text from Microsoft Word. I'm going to use simple text for this particular example and type flooded area in this box. As you might have figured out, if I try to drag this flooded area box, it's not gonna go over on top of the picture. Main reason you cannot add text on top of the picture in Microsoft Word because they are located on the same layer. If you consider Word document paper as one layer, text and picture would be on the same layer too. To make them work nicely with each other, we need to put picture behind the text and put text on top of the picture. To accomplish this, we need to change picture formatting options. To do that, we select the picture and in the upper right corner, you see different layout options available for the picture. We're going to choose the option which is called Behind Text. And now, what you can see is that the text that was at the bottom of the picture migrated over on top of the picture. But again, this is not what we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm going to use Enter button and move this text down to the next page. I'm also going to bring my picture back by dragging and dropping the picture on the previous page. Once picture is in position, I can drag the text over and put it on top of the picture. The cool thing about this method is that you can place the text anywhere on top of the picture where you would like. And if you don't like the white background in the text, or you don't like the line, let's go ahead and change the formatting for this inserted text area. To do that, we need to right mouse click on the text, select Format Shape, and as a first step, we're going to remove the line. So now we see the text, which we can still drag around, but now this text doesn't have the line. If you don't like the white area around the text, you can change the fill for this text area. To do this, we're going to click the fill and select no fill. Now we only have black text, which we can also drag around the picture and place anywhere we would like. Couple things to consider. One of the options you can do is to change the size of the text. You can make it bigger so it is proportional to the size of the picture itself. 
If you would like to put the text on top of the darker side of the picture, you might consider changing the color of the text as well. For example, to give it more contrast, you might consider changing the color of the text. And you can do it by selecting the font color, and the good choice here might be white. You can also make text bold. You can also change text into italic and increase the size based on what you're trying to accomplish. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. A lot of times, you may need to remove blank pages in your Microsoft Word document. For example, this is an essay document created in Microsoft Word that my son wrote based on the stories that I told him. As you can see, this document contains multiple blank pages at the end. There are seven different scenarios that might be causing blank pages at the end of your Microsoft Word document, and we will look at all of them in this video one by one. The first and the most common scenario is extra characters on Microsoft Word page. You do not see these extra characters on the regular view. To enable the special view, you need to click on the Hide Show Special Characters button. Once you click on this button, you see special characters that show up on the page. For example, this is the end of the line character, and this is the space character. And this is an insert page break symbol, which allows Microsoft Word with just one symbol to reserve the blank page. If you are trying to intelligently remove pages, you need to understand what information is located on the page, because Microsoft Word typically just flows the text and doesn't typically add just extra pages. In this category, you might also see some text which is of the white color. For example, in this line there is a text, but we do not see it because the font color is white. But if we change the color to black, we see that this is a hidden text, which shows in white and takes space on the page. There are multiple ways you can remove these hidden characters from the page. You can put the cursor behind the last text and use the backspace button, and it is going to remove the text or you can just highlight the text and click the delete button. Second most common scenario is extra line added at the end of the Word document. For example, on this page, there is nothing visible in default view, but as soon as we enable show hide view, we see that there are extra blank lines, and you can delete them by selecting them and clicking the delete button. Another very frequent scenario that add additional pages in Microsoft Word are page breaks. Page breaks are typically used to separate the pages. You can insert the page break by clicking on Insert Ribbon tab and selecting Page Break. You can also use Control enter shortcut on your keyboard. In default view, page breaks are not visible, but if you use Show Hide button, they show up. Page break is just one symbol, and if you delete it, it's an equivalent of deleting the blank page. To delete the page break, you select the page break or put the cursor behind it, and then use the delete or backspace button. Another very frequent scenario you might see in Microsoft Word document is floating text. And sometimes this floating text might also be hidden. For example, there is nothing unusual you see on this blank page, but if you enable show hide button and then highlight everything on the page, you see that there is a block of text which is floating. Floating means that you can drag this text and position it in the different areas of the page. In reality, this is the text here in this block. This text by default has white font color, but we can highlight it by changing the font color. This way you can see it on the screen. This text is floating, so you can drag and drop this text in the different areas of the screen. Sometimes this text might be hidden and take space on the page and Microsoft Word would reserve this page as a blank page. Another very common scenario that generates blank pages is hidden table. For example, there is nothing unusual we see on this blank page, but as soon as we enable show height characters, we see that there is a hidden table here. We can select the table by clicking on the tag in the upper left corner, and then we can enable borders to see that this is actually a table. To delete this table, you need to select the table, right mouse click on the table, and click delete table. Another very common scenario you might encounter is the white image. You might have heard about pixel techniques that advertising companies use to track users on the web pages. The way this technique works is by having something invisible on the page. In our case, what we see on the page by selecting an object on the top of the page 
is the image. This image is purely white, and by default it is not visible. This image is not even visible when we click Show Hide buttons. You only need to select it to see that this is the image. You can resize it, make it bigger or smaller, but reality is this is the white image. To delete this white image, you need to select it, do a right mouse click, and click the Cut button. Another way to delete it is to select it and click the Delete button on your keyboard. Very often, you will delete all the blank pages, but your document may not fit into the right number of pages. I'll show you one trick how you can adjust Word document size in terms of number of pages by changing document's layout. For example, the document I currently have has five pages, and my goal is to fit it into fewer number of pages. To do this, I need to navigate to the Layout tab, click on the margins, and select different types of margins. Right now, the wide margins are selected, which make Word leave one inch on top and the bottom, and leave two inches on the left and right of the document. If I switch to normal layout, you see that the number of pages is reduced, and you can see the number of pages in the document in the lower left corner. If you're trying to control number of pages with the highest level of precision, you can always choose custom margins by navigating to the Layout tab, selecting Margins, and clicking on the custom margins. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.